Okay, so today we are talking begonia propagation. Now I grow loads of begonias and the first thing you notice when you get on the internet is that there are literally hundreds, maybe even thousands of videos all about begonia propagation. So I thought, what could I actually bring to the party? So what I'm gonna do here, I've found six different methods and I'm going to go through each of the methods, explain what I'm doing, and I'm actually going to try them for the first time. One of the methods I've actually tried already, I have to admit. It, but the others are all completely new to me so I'm going to do it as a learner and I'm also going to teach you at the same time they all say don't they the best way to learn something is to teach it so we're going to go through those hopefully any mistakes that I make will be something that you don't then go and follow and copy in the future when you do it so in order to make it slightly different not only am I going to list all these methods and explain in another video I'm going to show you the effectiveness of that particular propagation method on the ones that I've actually tried so we're only going to concentrate on three groups of begonias. So they are the Rex group, the Cane group and the small Rhizomatus group because those are the three groups that tend to be used for houseplants. So let's jump in. And we are in. Okay, so I've made a little chart here just so that you can see the various methods. I'm probably not going to fill all the boxes in here in my second video. I'll talk through the results, but it is helpful just to have a look at how I've split this up. So down the left hand side, we've got the various methods of which I've given a name to each so more on that later and along the top you can see the different plants that I'm going to use and the grouping so we've got silver lace which is rex griffon and listada which are both cane varieties the silver jewel which is a rhizomatus and also begonia boweri which is also rhizomatus so just before I show you the methods for purposes of clarity I have used some different names for these different propagation methods some of the names are already out there on the internet some I've just made up just so that we know what we're talking about rather than saying method one, method two, and so on. I would use a media, and this is just an example, you can use other medias of course, I would use a media of peat moss or peat substitute and perlite 50-50. I would make sure that every propagation is in a high humid environment, so that means that you need to either use a propagation box and make sure the leaves don't touch the lid, I would use a bag or make sure again the leaves don't touch the side of the bag. Let some air in occasionally just to make sure that all the condensation on the inside of your propagator is cleared i would also give it some bottom heat of about 18 degrees celsius in terms of temperature for your propagations roughly 18 degrees celsius they can go higher but you don't want them to be absolutely frazzling so i'd say anything over 25 degrees celsius is going to be too much i would keep them in bright shade so not in deep shade not in direct sunlight bright shade would be about perfect and it would also be a good idea if you would sanitize your tools beforehand and between every propagation that you take i was confess I don't normally do that but I take that risk if you don't want to take a risk then sanitize your tools okay let's get into it okay I've already put my media in I've got five pots and I've got five leaves from plants so a couple more from this small one here and this does demonstrate actually over here with this very small one this is begonia boweri how this particular cone method probably isn't the one to use for this it's more likely to be the small rhizomatous method so for our method number one this is the cone method and this is begonia silver lace so I've just cut a leaf off there and all I'm going to do is remove the center so I'm going to cut around the I'm going to expose those veins and I don't need to do it with anything fancy I just simply cut and tear right the way along the center like that and you'll see what we'll be left with is a cone now we're not going to discard that bit because that's going to come in handy later on and there is our cone and that is simply going to be pressed in the soil into the media like that so that's going to go in like that and all I need to do is just kind of move the media up so that it's in contact there. So what you're actually doing there is exposing those veins. You can see on this one, these main veins on the leaf, you're exposing them to the media. And that is the cone method, as simple as that. So what I will do with this cone method is do exactly the same with these other plants now. So this one is Begonia griffon. cut into segments already which is actually one of the other methods it's just kind of split itself into segments 
There we go. So we'll make sure that that is all nice there. And we've got the Listada here. And in whatever length of time it takes to, to show some results, I'll make another video and we'll have a look at how successful or not these were. So that's method one. And I've kept all these little bits because they will be used in method two. Right, for method two, this is called the leaf method, a leaf cutting method, or that's what I'm giving it a name of. So basically what you do is the bit that was left, and you don't want that to be too long. I'm gonna do it about four or five centimeters, and you basically stick it into the pot. So I'm going to do all these at once because I don't want to waste pots. I've not got that many pots. It will actually mean I'd have to clean some, so I'm not going to do that. So there's two, got one more there. Stick that one in, that's Listada. And then we've got Silver Jewel. I think that one's probably about the right size. And then these tiny, tiny ones from Begonia Bowerai, which I really don't think will work, but you know, why not give it a go? I think that one will definitely be the splitting of the rhizome method. So I'm gonna do two there just to be, again, a little non-scientific. So there's cuttings two. That's the second method, the ones that I'm calling leaf cuttings and we'll move on to method number three. Okay for the next method we're down on the floor so we're looking at this begonia listada. Now this method more closely resembles your traditional stem tip cuttings where you would normally cut just below a leaf node. So here I'm going to cut just below a leaf node as it happens and I can't really show you right close up what I'm doing but it's just it's just an ordinary stem I'll try and show it it's just an ordinary stem it's the end point of the new growth this is a cane type begonia so I'm just going to snip it off it does look like it might be a, rhizom, a rhizome a rhizomatous one but it's not and you can see here that we just have an ordinary shoot, the end of a shoot. Now normally with a stem tip cutting, you would cut below a leaf node, you would strip all the bottom leaves and you would just pop it in the pot. But it doesn't really matter, I believe, if there's a little bit of stem underneath, underneath the leaf node. It will probably root from anywhere along that stem. So what I'm going to do is, I'm not gonna do any more cuts to that, I'm just going to remove a couple of these bottom leaves just so that I can get it in the pot and it doesn't really matter that there's all that growth on top. I'm just going to leave that and that will go in the pot as it is. So for method number three, I've only actually managed to find two growing tips that would satisfy the criteria for a stem tip cutting. So you can see I've cut below a leaf node, but there is still a little bit of stem on. And the same with that, we don't need to worry about that. This one is a kind of all tangled up there, so I don't know how that's gonna do, but I've not reduced all the leaves. Normally I would, I'm just gonna see what happens. This is the way the method was shown to me, so let's see if it works. So I always put them at the side of the pot. I know that's not something that everybody does, but just to give it a little bit of stability really, so that it's not falling over. Um, same with that one. So we've got Listada here and we've got Silver Jewel. They're going to go in there and of course, like all the others, they will go in some kind of high humidity environment with a covering on of some sort, whether it be a plastic bag and the leaves mustn't touch the side of the bag, or it might be a purpose-built propagator if I can get them all in, because they only have a small propagator. So let's move on to method number four. Okay, method number four is the same as method number one where you cut it into a cone, but this time you actually separate them out and call them wedges. So the only difference here is that this isn't all joined together in a cone. So they would then go into the media with the vein 
pointing downwards into or you know, in contact with the media. So I'm not actually going to call this number four. This really is the same as number one, just a slight different uh, alternative to it really, uh, just a, another way. I thought it'd be worth showing you that, but I'm not going to count that in the six. And I'm only going to do it with Griffon because I don't really think that's a different method. It's just a, a slightly different interpretation of the same method. So we'll move on to the real method number four for the rest of them. And I'll pop these up as I've just explained. Okay, for the next method, we'll call this the flat leaf method. We're going to cut off the main stalk, the petiole of the the leaf and all we're going to do here is cut through each of the main veins just ever so slightly just a little tiny cut you can do it with a knife you can actually probably do it with your fingers and it's that little cut that results in hopefully new plants okay so we've just gone through each of the main veins there tiny tiny cuts difficult to see and that is going to go flat on the surface and we need to make sure that those cuts come in contact with the surface so I'm going to weight it down with a little piece of crock like that I'll do exactly the same with Listada here I'm going to cut off the main petiole there and I'm just going to put a little it's easy to see on the back a little cut through each of those main veins that you can see there and then we will lay that flat on the surface and hopefully we'll get some new growth from those little slits. And I'll do exactly the same with the remaining leaf that I've got here. So number five is the easiest of the lot. This is simply cut a leaf off with the petiole here, the stalk here. I've cut out the side, because as you saw, I used that earlier on. I've cut out the edges there. It doesn't really matter. You can do it like that, or you can leave the whole leaf on, and you simply stick it in some water. So I'm going to do that with some of the others and see if they develop roots. It's very easy to do, and I'm sure you've all done this kind of method many many times before with various things so i'll do that you don't need to see that i'll go and do that in the background and we'll move on to the final method so for my final method this is the small rhizomatous group and it's just as it sounds really you're going to locate a rhizome and you can see one there traveling along in that direction and i'm simply going to cut it off Easier said than done with one hand, but you must make sure that it's got some growth nodes on it. It's no good if it's not got any growth nodes on it. So I'm going to cut that off straight down and I'll probably have to, there we go. I've managed to do it with one hand, fantastic. And we'll take that off and we'll go and deal with that over on the bench. So what I'm going to do here is remove some of these leaves and the, the idea is that you just simply push it down into the compost so that it's already got some nice growth on it or oh, there's some flowers come in there so i'll cut them off just pull those off and that is simply going to go there on the compost and i simply push it in and cover it over a little bit and that's how you deal with small rhizomatous begonias so i'm going to go and do that with one of my other small rhizomatous begonias i'll put it there and then we're all set so there you can see all my begonia propagations now i've not been able to do as many as i thought simply because the plants in some cases just aren't big enough and i don't want to, to completely ruin all my plants and take all the growth points off them i think you get the idea so i've shown you six there possibly seven if you count the one where you make a cone like this one here and but then you cut it into wedges like i've done there with the griffon but really that's to me that's the same thing if i get some plants off that and some plants off that that would be fantastic but if i get some off there or none off there or vice versa then maybe it'll show you that one's better than the other so it's worth doing in that sense i've also got to put a couple more into the water just to see what happens there again i'm not really a big fan of water propagation i know a lot of people absolutely love doing that um, I will have a go see if I can find any more leaves without completely destroying my plants I've also done the begonia bowerai down there that's the rhizomatous one I had a look at my other rhizomatous one the silver jewel but it's just not big enough to take any more rhizome off it well hopefully when it comes around to having another look at these these will now go into the propagator if I can fit them in or they will certainly be in a high humidity environment I'll give them all a water I'm going to cover them as best I can I've got a couple of 
containers there that they can go in if I can fit them in. I will put them in plastic bags. And even if they're not in any of those things, the hothouse where I'm going to keep them is a highly humid environment. It's very rarely under 70% anyway. Uh, so we'll see what we can do. You know, this is this is reality, isn't it? This is what happens. You can't always do it exactly as people show you. So it would be really interesting to see what happens and see how effective some of these methods are. Maybe they'll all work. Maybe some of them will work and some of them won't. So what I'm hoping you'll do, if you've used any of these methods, please tell me in the comments of your experiences. If I've missed a method out, again, tell me in the comments of your experiences. And if you love begonias and you're just getting into them and I think you should go and watch this video because this in my opinion is one of the best begonias that you could possibly grow and it really makes a statement it's called begonia luxuriant and the videos up there just now so this hopefully will be a video that you can refer to in the future if you're propagating begonias don't forget to check out part two when that comes out and for now I'll see you on the next one bye